All right, what is going on, guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So, recently I've seen a lot of people on social media complaining about the Saiyan Day celebration that we got this year and specifically talking about how it was a huge letdown and uh, how Bandai really dropped the ball this time. So, in today's video, I want to quickly just talk about the celebration and give you guys my opinions, my thoughts about how good it was and whether or not it was actually a you know big disappointment right now the main focus in this video will be on the global side of the game because as many of you know I am and always will be a global main and of course there were some differences in the celebrations between the two sides that in all honesty makes the JP celebration a little bit better than the global one so of course we'll get to those differences in a second as well but uh, why don't we just jump right into it look at the details look at what we actually got for this year's Saiyan Day celebration on global and uh, go from there okay so first things first of course we had a login bonus and some special missions which is standard for every single celebration and uh, this Dragonstone sale I actually want to give some props to Bandai for because it's uh, quite a bit better than your standard Dragonstone sale. Of course, if you're free to play, then it doesn't apply to you. But for us uh, pay to play players or people who are willing to spend a little bit of money on this game, um, 32 stones is actually like the 32 stone pack sale is actually very, very good value. And we were able to buy this pack up to five times, which was a pretty nice bonus compared to your standard sale where we usually get like one or two of the 32 stone packs. And even for the 91 packs, which I'm not a huge fan of, we usually get like four or five of them. And this time we got seven. So even though it's not like the best sale we've ever seen, uh, cause usually those are reserved for like the anniversaries where we get crazy packs of like a hundred stones for 30 bucks or something like that. It's not quite that good, but uh, it is better than your standard Dragonstone sale. So a little bit of props to Bandai for that. Now moving on to the Dokkan Festival here, of course every celebration um, does need a new unit for us to summon on or summon for. And uh, the Bardock is obviously amazing, this uh, Raditz is really good too, but I've always said, and I've said this for a long time now, new characters and new banners do not account for lack of content or they don't represent content you know what i mean like they could release 10 banners for a celebration and i could still consider it consider it a really really bad celebration if there's not much new content or not many new events for us to actually use those units on right so even though um these characters are great uh i don't really you know think about it too much or consider it too much as far as how good the overall celebration is right like for example the five-year anniversary had uh, amazing, amazing characters or new units released, right, for, for summons. But um, if you consider just like all the events cumulatively, it was a pretty good celebration, but I wouldn't say it was an amazing celebration, right? So anyways, both of these guys, great new units, but not really a huge factor as far as my ultimate decision about how good this Saiyan Day celebration actually was. And on a side note, actually, if I may, I feel like the actual banner itself, with the exception of the Bardock, the Raditz, and of course, the LR Gobros, which was a nice addition, the rest of this banner was actually pretty trash, man. I mean, not to say the characters are trash, but a lot of them were very old, and for older players like me, people who have been playing for a while, you probably have either all of them, or most of them, or in my situation, have most of them rainbowed, right? So. Uh, the overall value of this banner really wasn't the greatest with the exception of those three characters, those three units I mentioned. And uh, I wasn't a huge fan of this guy's banner either. Alright, so uh, anyways, moving on, we have this revenge category summon, which you can basically just throw in the garbage. And uh, we also have a Elder Kai banner, which is whatever, I mean if you need Kai's, you can go for it, but uh, not really anything crazy either. Of course, the Tokan event or the new Bardock, gotta have that. And now we get to the main event for this year's Saiyan Day. Basically the only new event that Global got for our Saiyan Day celebration this year. And uh, it's the free to play team Bardock. And in this situation, once again, I do have to give a little bit of props to Bandai because 
I actually really, really like this team. They're a lot of fun to run. Last night, I did a showcase of them on the Ultra Instinct Goku Dokkan event, which is still, in my opinion, one of the hardest Dokkan events in the game. And they performed very, very well there. I can definitely confirm that they're much better than the free-to-play Ginyu Force team. And uh, for the most part, they should be able to beat at least most of the Dokkan events currently available in the game, with the exception of maybe a few like the AGL Gogeta or Fizz Broly or something like that. But for newer players who, you know, just started the game and don't really have proper teams to take on these Dokkan events, it's going to help them a ton in awakening some of their Dokkan Fest exclusive units, right? So that's pretty awesome. And uh, I do want to give props to Bandai for that. Also, the animations for all of these units, especially the LR, they're all top, top tier. The LR, honestly, um, has like summonable unit level animations, in my opinion, once again. So I really like that. Obviously, there was a lot of effort put into the LR and also these other free-to-play cards as a part of this free-to-play team Bardock. So yeah, props to Bandai for that. But, and you guys knew there was gonna be a but, this event was pretty much the lone shining star in a pretty bland celebration overall. Because if you go beyond that, we got a new Ultimate Clash, which was great, but this essentially is a monthly reoccurring event now, not really you know unique to this celebration by any means. And we also are getting Super Battle Road every single day, but once again, we've had Super Battle Road for such a long time now, it's not really anything special that we get it every single day. I mean, it's nice, I guess, that we don't have to wait for the weekend, but there was nothing new that was added to this event. Whereas on JP, they got a completely new version or a new iteration of Super Battle Road, the extreme Super Battle Road with more enemies and harder difficulty and all that stuff. And uh, it gave JP players just a lot more um, new content to grind or you know something to actually work towards because it was a major challenge. And I know a lot of people out there are still struggling to beat all these new stages. And I've heard they're a lot harder than the current Super Battle Road stages, which is awesome because um, I'm always looking for a challenge in this game, right? And with the current events that are available on Global, we don't really get that challenge, at least for, you know, more long-term players like me. So uh, getting Extreme Super Battle Road would have been really nice, but instead we just get the regular Super Battle Road every single day, which once again is nothing special. And then we have the return of a few old story events. Okay, that's fine. Um, and we also have Dokkan events that are available every single day. But who cares, man? Who cares about Dokkan events being available? I mean, once again, it's convenient for people that need these medals. But uh, for veteran players, or even not even for like super veteran players, like if you've been playing this game for like maybe a year plus, um, you're not gonna really care too much about Dokkan events or old story events returning, right? And then some more old story events, and that's it. That is literally it for the events. So, at least new events, right? So, um, as I said, basically the only new thing for this year's Saiyan Day is the free to play team Bardock. And I do want to be clear once again big props to Bandai for this because this is actually awesome. But if you think about it, as far as the total amount of gameplay time we get out of this, it takes about an hour to grind each member. There are five members, so it's five hours in total. And for a two to three week long celebration like this one, that is simply not enough content to keep us occupied. Like, I know most people, myself included, are just so bored of Dokkan at the moment because there's nothing to do on the global side, right? They're like, there's literally nothing to grind. There's literally just no reason to open the app at the moment except to log in and get our bonuses every single day. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys share my sentiment at the moment. And uh, what else is there to talk about? Um, oh, we did get a few other things. All right, we did get a few other things. So first things first, there is the new stamina restoration items. And uh, this is definitely a great new feature. Um, albeit very, very late because almost every other gacha game I've ever played has had this feature either from launch or very soon after launch, right? So stamina restoring items is really nothing new. It's something that like basically 
has been a staple of gacha games, mobile, like anime mobile games for ever. And it's really weird to me that it took Bandai, or at least took Dokkan, um, more than five years to add it to the game. That's kind of crazy, but either way, you know, we still, we still got it and it's finally here. So that's good. Um, so props to Bandai for that, but I don't think it's really a revolutionary new feature. It's going to help a lot for grinding um, new characters, like for your play characters or grinding world tournament, so on and so forth. I do appreciate it, no doubt, but it's not something that like I'm super, super hyped about by any means. Right? I just got to be honest. And uh, next up, we also have or had a social media campaign, which uh, I really wasn't following too much, but it was a Facebook campaign and we got, I think in total, like 15 or oh, 18 stones, my bad, 18 dragon stones in total. So nice little bonus right there. So aside from that, let's go back to the main page here. That's everything that we got for this same day celebration. And when you just look at this celebration as a whole and also with the way that it was kind of hyped up with like the second ever Dokkan now, which of course people were super excited for. And the fact that they made it a Dokkan now like event made it a much bigger deal than maybe it was supposed to be or what it actually ended up being. So I would say this celebration, um, moment of truth, you know, time for my final decision. Uh, I would say <laughs> that this celebration was not a huge letdown, but it was a letdown. It was a disappointment, no doubt, because we didn't get any new story events. I mean, I guess you could consider the Ginyu Force, or not Ginyu Force, the uh, the Team Bardock event a story event, but it's not really a new story event in the traditional sense of things. And uh, we also didn't get any new Extreme Z Awakenings. They really missed a huge opportunity to give us either one new Extreme Z Awakening related to this or multiple Extreme Z Awakenings, right? So we could have gotten like a uh, Mass Saiyan Extreme Z Awakening, which would have been really nice. I would have been okay with that. Um, but we also could have received Extreme Z Awakenings for every member of uh, Team Bardock. Not the free to play ones, but the summonable Great Ape ones. Like those ones could really benefit from Extreme Z Awakenings. I mean, they're not bad, but like Extreme Z Awakenings for them would have been great, right? And uh, we didn't get anything like that. They could have also actually Extreme Z Awakened the free to play Team Bardock members, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, but that could have also been a thing. And uh, we didn't get that. And we also did not get Extreme Super Battle Road on Global, which was a pretty big shaft. I don't see why we couldn't get it on both sides at the same time, considering it is a joint celebration. Why give JP something a little bit extra that Global um, just does not get? And I don't really see a reasoning behind that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased towards the global side, but I think that was pretty unfair. And um, yeah, man, I mean, for that reason, I did say in the beginning, of course, the JP celebration was quite a bit better. Not like a ton better, but definitely better. And uh, the celebration overall was a bit of a letdown. It was a bit of a disappointment. Not the huge disappointment that people maybe make it out to be because this is not a very long celebration overall it's like a two to three week celebration like i said and we should be getting the next dokkan fest on global pretty soon um at the beginning of april so the dry spell shouldn't last for more than a week or so beyond this video um but still man i did expect more i'm sure all of you guys expected more as well and i gotta say this was a uh, letdown overall so that's pretty much gonna do it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and before you go make sure to let me know in the comments down below what your opinions are about this year's same day celebration on both the global and jp side but more specifically the global side because obviously like i said the global one was not as good as the jp celebration and uh, let me know if you agree with me, agree with my opinions, or if you disagree, then let me know why, because I would love to hear about that too. And that's it, guys. That's all I got to say. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it 
I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.